Uh, we'll just start in a few moments. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> um, we're going to go ahead and get started, even though we're a slim group. Maybe people will arrive late as they, um, they did last week. Um, so welcome to the June uh, 2022 CAG meeting. It's also the 22nd meeting of the CAG. Um, thank you for making the time to be here. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Desiree. Hi, Desiree. Hi. Thank you, Paula and Tara. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, so yes, welcome to the 22nd meeting of the Community Advisory Group. Um, we'll get started. So project area overview. Again, we're all familiar with this at this point. Um, Esker focus area topics. Uh, we'll go through most of these items. I think one or two of them we are not going to hit today, um, but most of them we will. Desiree, we're not seeing slides if we're supposed to be. Oh, thank you. Hold on a second. Uh, me too. Okay. Now, now can you see my slides? <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. All right, so welcome to the uh, June 23rd uh, CAG meeting number 22. Uh, my name is Desiree Gazzo. I also forgot that part. Um, I am with HNTB Lero, uh, PMCM, Program Management, Construction Management. Uh, with the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Um, I'm joined here today um, by colleagues at the DDC um, and HNT Bulero as well. Um, and I see some other agency folks on the call um, also. So thank you and apologies for, for not having that up. All right, great. So project area overview. Um, oh, I actually have to update this, uh, this map, but uh, I'll update it before we post it. <clears throat> um, the East 10th Street PC work is actually in project area one. So that, so that is why this image is, is going to change slightly. Um, 
ask your focus area topics. So these are the topics um, that were established um, about two CAG meetings ago um, as kind of priorities. And then the rest of the presentation is um, based on those. Um, so we would like to start with some really great news. Um, as of about two weeks ago, the community call for art was posted on site um, at uh, East River Park, Astro Levy Playground, and Murphy Brothers Playground. Um, so this was the call for art submission that we had last year. Um, we received about 203 submissions citywide, um, including 110 from local zip codes, and they're, they're listed on the slide. Um, art was collected in person at Tompkins Square and Seward Park Library. So many thanks to the staff there for letting us keep the boxes there and again, collecting the artwork. Um, much of this was still, I mean, we're still in COVID, but last year it was, you know, it's still so. So the number of places that we could actually have in-person drop-off boxes was slim. So again, many thanks to the folks at the libraries there for letting us have the drop boxes there. Um, I have on this slide also the selection committee, which we're very thankful for. Um, Abrams Art Center, good old Lower East Side, Fab NYC, Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, LEAP, and then a member from the CB6 Arts Subcommittee. So again, thank you so much. Uh, the final uh, selected art was 40 pieces in total, um, 33 from student artists K through 12, and then seven local artists. Um, and like I said, the art is displayed in the park. Um, so if you haven't been out to any of the parks to see it, please do. It looks really amazing. Um, and we have online the uh, panel locations. So they're broken out into the four categories that we had for the call for art project. So it was a K through four category, five through eight, nine through 12, and then local artists. Um, each artist's artwork is up twice. Um, and then, you know, we tried to space them out between project area one and project area two. Um, some pieces of art are twice in project area one, just because that's how, um, that's how it worked out. So this you could find um, online on the call for art page. Um, yesterday, we had the certificate event in the Astor Levy Rec Center. Um, we were going to have it out on the track, uh, but the uh, rain kind of made us go inside. So we had the, um, the certificate event. Um, our DDC commissioner, Thomas Foley, was there and, and had some really nice things to say, um, as well as CM Keith Powers and uh, CM Rivera. So we were, you know, so grateful to have them there with us. They all had really wonderful things um, to say to the children and the two local artists who were able to attend. Um, just really inspiring, and it was it was a really really nice day. Um, and there were some snacks, and the, uh, some other folks from DDC were there. So the kids were like ecstatic. I mean, you could kind of see here from their faces, but when they got to take pictures with um, Councilwoman Rivera and the and the commissioner, they were just like all big, and everybody was clapping for them. So it was just really wonderful. Um, again, we're looking forward to doing another another one. So. Um, you know, again, if you know of artists that would like to get involved, um, I guess maybe in about a year, we'll start the um, the next one. So thank you again for anyone who, you know, helped push the the uh, the announcements and, and et cetera along. Um, hiring compliance, we had the spring session, which we which we discussed. Um, so the event recording is now um, up on the website. It was as of last Friday, um, but you could view both the presentation and the recording now um, on the website on the Work With Us page. Um, so again, if anyone needs to update their resume, um, it was lesson had some really great tips. Um, so you should definitely, um, definitely take a look. Uh, so tabling in the community. So uh, typically we weren't announcing the tabling um, where we were going to be. Um, just again, we 
had protesting issues, so we didn't want that to kind of hinder the tabling event. Um, but we did hear that you know you requested um, to have advance notice for the tabling events. So we are going to try that. Um, so we're going to be doing our next tabling event um, on June 30th at Gouverneur Gardens um, between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Um, and then I think we're going to try and do two different locations, but that's kind of being discussed where we would do um, the tabling. Uh, there will be, as, as everyone's aware, there will be upcoming work um, in the Gouverneur Gardens area. So um, we thought that that would be kind of a good next spot to go. Um, I did include on the agenda um, Joyce, our CCL's uh, email. If you would like us to come table at um, your um, at your building or um, at you know in, in an area of your neighborhood you know we again we've done on kind of a street corner we could do within kind of a complex um, we're you know, we're very open to tabling locations but please reach out because um, you know, it's, we will come um, if, if you let us know where, where you'd like us to be. So thank you again. Um, we also tried um, hanging up the, um, the mesh panels, the kind of informational mesh panels, um, again, on the Stanton Street gates. Um, so far, they've been okay. There was some um, tape and things taped to them. Um, which we which we removed, um, but it looks as of right now that they're holding up um, much better, knock on wood, than the last set that was up. So that's really great because again, if if they could stay, then we'll we'll put up more. Um, so again, the ones that are in this picture here are the is the panel that talks about the plantings and the diversity of plantings that um, Esker will have, and then the uh, the other panel here is about recreation. So. Again, it would be really great if we could keep them up because I think they offer a lot of information when we can't be on site. Um, and again, it was planned to have them up, um, you know, to have that information. So um, hopefully, hopefully everything will be okay. All right, so project area overview. Um, most of this is, is the same as the CB3 meeting. Um, I think the waterfront work, we're gonna see a, a uptick in that and we'll go over that on on the um, on the the PA one slides, uh, project area two is is moving along, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in the slides. And then parallel conveyance, there really isn't an update on parallel conveyance more than what we have here. Um, the contract was formally awarded um, in May. Uh, however, there is still procurement steps that you know, folks are, that the team and, and GDC and the city are kind of working through. And then again, work should start in the fall um, and we'll have more in, in the coming months. So there, there isn't an update um, more than that at this point, uh, but once there is, we will definitely um, report that here. So for project area two, um, here is the current uh, closed areas. Again, Asa Levy Playground is open. Um, so you can, you can go there. Again, the artwork is there. Uh, the artwork may move out of Asa Levy Playground, um, but we're still having some conversations um, about that. And if it does move out, we'll let you know where it goes. But Stuyvesant Cove Park, north of 20th Street, it's still the, um, it's still the, the seat work uh, wall reconstruction, um, and they're actually putting down some of the paved areas kind of the along the water. Uh, so that's looking really nice. Um, otherwise, in the rest of the areas, we're working on flood wall construction, East 15th Street in the Con Ed facility. They're working on the sewer reconstruction. Again, that's all within the Con Ed facility. Um, FGR drive northbound exit seven ramp underneath kind of underneath the FGR area in the yard. Uh, there is ongoing pile installation there um, and ESC work. And then for Sty Cove Park south of East 20th Street starting the week of July 5th and I have a slide the next slide will give us a little bit more information. Um, the southern park of Stuyvesant Cove Park um, will 
close to start the pile work there. Uh, again, the ferry access will remain. And then um, if you do drive in this area, you will see on Avenue C between East 20th Street and East 18th Street, um, there is Con Ed work there that's taking up a portion of the lane. Um, so that is Con Ed work um, and not specifically um, Esker work. So uh, there was a request to just go into a little bit more detail about the um, upcoming access in Stuyvesant Cove Park. So this is from the advisory that was issued and you could find it on the website. I actually, I also put a link to it in the agenda that was sent out. Um, <clears throat> but this is what kind of circulation will look like there. So the blue is the greenway. So the green will, will remain open um, while this portion um, is under construction. So currently uh, the line that's closed is about here. Um, so this, this is going to be the next part that's being taken. Again, the greenway will remain open here um, and access to the ferry will remain all open as well. And then the contractor will slowly start to give back um, first the solar one area and then um, the northern part of, of Stuyvesant Grove Park um, as we move through uh, kind of towards the end of the summer uh, and, and into the fall. Um, and then this area will be permanently, or not permanently, it'll be under construction, uh, doing the same activities that we saw um, in the northern part. So again, the, the pile work and then the, the foundation work um, and then the wall, et cetera. So we'll provide updates as that moves forward. But I hope this, this again, this is on the website, but this should give you a little bit clearer um, of what that circulation will look like. And then this is kind of a, you know, taking a look back at what that detour is again for the greenway. Um, and again, it shows the greenway open here and then closed there and then local traffic here. Um, so that will be until uh, the northern portion opens again. And then once the northern portion opens, which is anticipated for the fall of this year, again, <clears throat> it wasn't going to open until the end of the year, but we're looking it's looking like we will be able to open this, um, including the greenway uh, in the fall. So then once that greenway area opens, then that will shorten the detour. It will not need to go to East 37th Street. Um, and then this Southern portion of the greenway will close. Again, only when it, need, you know, when it needs to be closed, they'll try and keep it open as long as possible. Um, but then this Southern area here will close um, which will no longer link now to uh, East River Park. Um, so then there will be a, a detour here. Um, okay, so I think we're going to take questions then and then jump into project area one, if we wanna do that. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, Diane. Hi, yeah, can, Desiree, can you go back to the previous slide about Stico? Yeah, of course. This one? Yeah, that one. Great. So uh -huh. just just to be sure that I understand um, that the note there says um, will be closed for construction activities through late summer 2022. But when you close that section, you're not going to reopen it till it's done, are you? Or are, is it somehow going to reopen before you close it for good? No, this area. Through late summer 2022. No, yes, you're correct. No, that will be this. The southern part here will be open for longer than summer of 2022. Yeah, so that um, I'll take a look at the advisory. It might need to be um, updated. Yeah, it's uh, because uh, my understanding is that on July 5th, starting July 5th, the entire park will be closed. Correct. Right. Yes. And then sometime later in the summer, or in the fall, the northern sections will begin to open, but that right. southern section will not reopen for another year or two years, something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, that's absolutely correct. I'll have to look at that, the last sentence, this last sentence here, that will probably need to be revised. Yeah. Yeah. I, that would, that would help, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then. Do you, you don't have a timetable yet for the reopening, the rolling reopening of the northern end? 
Um, not specifically. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, okay. but we are coordinating with EDC and Solar One on that. Okay. I believe they have an event at the end of the summer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're getting questions from people who are saying, um, that they're surprised to hear that the, par the entire park will be closed for the entire summer because they thought that half of it was going to be open at all times. Um, yeah, I think the um, because Asser Levy was able to open and they're not going into Murphy Brothers Playground, mm -hmm. um, there was some discussion about kind of accelerating the the cycle park work um, again to again eventually hope to shave off time at the end and return the whole park, you know. Um, Does it raise down to you want oh, my input? Sure. Go ahead, Damry. Damry, DDC. Um, so my name is Damry. I'm with DDC. I'm the project manager for the, uh, what we know as the PA2 project. And specifically to the Stife Cove Park, I think the date here is a typo, should say 2023. Um, regarding the section of the park. So the work is moving along much faster than anticipated. And in, in an effort to construct and give the entire park back, um, we have agreement with EDC along with Solar One to extend the construction to the uh, zone as it shows now. This anticipation is to expedite work, being able to give the park back much earlier than just trying to give a piece at a time. However, we are working on giving the park back pieces at a time in a sense that as we are moving out, we will give back. So the solar one zone is expected to give back by the end of August. And um, right now the area is being finalized with the uh, walkway being constructed, um, seat water being constructed. Most of this area will be open to the general public uh, as we as uh, we move further down south, we will give back the northern portion. Uh, that is the plan, and all of this is to make the space back available to the community much earlier than anticipated. Thank you. Thanks, Camry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Sandy and then Robin. Hi, thank you. And, and that's a, that answered a few of my questions. Um, I wondered about the sinkhole and bulkhead repair. So is that that's ready to be started on the lower portion of um, Stuyvesant Cove Park as well? So there is two sinkhole there. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one is north of the ferry. And that one we are gonna resolve as we move to that zone, we will resolve it and uh, have the area restored properly. The one that is south to the ferry is not just a sinkhole, it's a sewer system that collapsed and that sewer system need to be repaired. Um, the repair of the sewer system is in the jurisdiction of EDC. And currently we're working with EDC to come up with a plan, a solution and fundings to have this done. It's in the works. Um, we don't have an exact timeline as for well when it will get resolved. We are hoping to have all of this done so nothing gets left behind as we walk away. But it's just to be proven exactly what the timeline is on that. And is the repair to the bulk, they're going to be repaired to the bulkhead as well? So there is challenge with the, um, what are you saying bulkhead? I'm thinking you meant the seawall. Uh, yes, I guess that's basically, yes. Okay, there is challenges with the seawall. The seawall is a little bit more invasive. Um, it, it might have some area that is, uh, more deteriorating than expected. And that also is a solution for that has to come from EDC with the plan of exactly what is required. Since all of this is under the jurisdiction of EDC, we have to take uh, guidance from them on how to proceed. Okay, thank you. And then I was wondering, um, when you talk about the Greenway, does that include bicycle access or is that really just pedestrian? Currently the pedestrian and, and, and bikers are using that same access way as it is right now. Um, expected it will stay the same. The cyclist is very minimal, where the um, mostly they are the pedestrian use. And I might say that's because the signage is extremely difficult to navigate. Um, it is. No, it might be. It might be more that it's more 
difficult to travel the 20th street corridor. Hmm. Between between Avenue C and East 20th Street? Uh, yes. Well, between Avenue C and going back to First Avenue. Hmm. So I think a lot of people um, go between the end of Avenue C up to 20th and, um, but that's, that's maybe a DOT issue, but um, having ridden it, it is a little bit difficult to navigate. And um, I think it would be great if there was a little better signage, but that may not be in your jurisdiction. So thank you. So here is the other thing to that, right? We understand that people want to use it and it's beneficial for their use, but it's not beneficial to the construction. Construction would prefer that it's not used. Um, there is a whole larger plan of the detour. Um, construction would prefer that that larger plan of detour followed. However, we are being accommodated to, to have this in place to allow for the small volume that prefer to use it. Thank you. Robin? Yeah. Go ahead, Robin. Um, thanks, I'm, I'm outside. I hope it, it's not too loud. Um, I just wanted to, I have a question about something else you mentioned, but I, I, yes, in keeping with the bike lane, you know, same thing. I, I, I did bike with traffic from, uh, you know, whatever, 16th Street to 20th Street. There, there are no signs. There is no bike path down there from Avenue C. So again, I would, I would suggest or, or hope you know, that that's something to be done there for, for cyclists, pedestrians as well. Um, just so you mentioned something about the parallel conveyance and I'm not sure if this is the right time to talk to ask you about that or not, or if you're continuing with the presentation further south, it has to do with the, the, with the, 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 the Hillman, uh, you know, um, the, the, the idea that the piping is now gonna go up Room Street and it's gonna be affecting Hillman Housing Corporation and the amalgamated houses. So. Is now a good time to ask you for that, or should I wait till later in the? So I can I can answer that now. So okay. there was there was a meeting that was held with um, East River Housing Corp, the Hellman Housing, and there's another housing um, section there. Um, apparently, uh, information was not being transferred from one the from one constituents to the other, and that's not within the DC jurisdiction. Our agreement, the city agreement is with the East River Housing Corp. And so that's all we had known about. Now that the meetings are happening, talks are on the way, the other party are coming in place. Needless to say, um, it's being worked out as for what needs to be done. It, uh, we are in talks right now and um, things are moving along. Our party is, in somewhat of an agreement of what needs to be done and what uh, on their, what's in their uh, court as for what has to be done. So it's being looked at. I think it, it's a positive solution um, with everyone on board at this time. Um, actually, I represent the Hillman Housing Corporation on this CAD committee and there's not a happy resolution. So I was wondering about that. Um, my understanding is that uh, we'll, our 830 uh, house, uh, uh, units plus the amalgamated units are going to be affected. Uh, heat and hot water potentially being, uh, being losing heat and hot water, and also that we hope that that both um, housing companies are being asked to finance some of this um, work. So, uh, and also that this is being suddenly brought to our attention um, for the fall, which none of us are looking for. Uh, so we understand that there is a the concern and um, cost and impact, and all of this is being in talks right now and being worked out to minimize the impact. The conversation that was had was everything could be planned out where the impact could be possibly one day at a time where you may be having the interruption of whether it's heat or hot water. Um, but it is, well, sure. it, is, it is something that is in the works. And, you know, as always, city comes out and do work and all constituents, party, residents, and businesses, they're all impacted. In this case, the talk is to figure out how to minimize the impact. So we understand there is concern, but at the same time, the work still has to get done. And, you know, the responsibility of course, or what may be, will go back to the to the owners of the property. 
So yeah, I, I I guess maybe we should. This is a separate conversation. I don't need to take up this meeting. I, maybe I could have a conversation with you and, and, and Desiree separately about this because I'm trying to get my co-op to understand. What all um, we are. we will be having other meetings on site. Um, I provide your information to Desiree, and when we have that meeting, we'll have you included so you can attend. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. All right, Dov. Being off of mute would help. Um, um, I just want to just clarify any communication East River received regards to that was sent over at the same day to um, Hillman. Uh, there was nothing that was held back. So as soon as we knew, it was the same day that Hillman knew. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Paula, I don't see anyone else. Did you? Uh, no. Anybody else have any questions? OK, you can continue, Desiree. Great. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for the questions. And thank you, Damry, for being on tonight. Um, OK, so for project area one uh, for June and July construction activities, um, most of this is, <clears throat> again, uh, the same as what we had reported um, at CB3. Um, I have a little bit more information about um, Houston Street, and I'll talk about the, um, the work that's kind of happening within the closed area of the park in the next slide a bit more. Um, the temporary bridge, again, was installed on Sunday. Uh, June 5th. Uh, there's some work on the ramps that are coming up to uh, up to the bridge. Uh, the flagpole area will be closing the week of the 27th. So at some point next week, um, once the ramps are complete, uh, then they will be able to again close the flagpole area, um, which leads to Corlears Hook Bridge, and then excuse me, open the temporary bridge for. Uh, pedestrians to use that. And then the Corlears Hook Bridge removal um, is currently scheduled for uh, the 10th of July. Um, let's see, the Con Ed work in the shared use path, um, we did get a little bit more information on that um, and in regards to the retaining wall. And again, we will talk about that a little bit longer, but I mean, in, in another slide or two, but we had uh, at the CB3 meeting, we had said that the shared use path was going to be to start giving back at this East House and Street area. So it looks like um, as, the, as the Con Ed work is completed, the contractor is going to immediately start um, or immediately soon thereafter, as, as, as soon as they get enough of the Con Ed work to be finished, um, however many feet that is, um, they are going to start with the um, retaining wall there. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about the retaining wall. Uh, there were some questions that we received about it, um, but it looks like this area won't be reopening here um, south of Houston Street and it will remain closed. So the access will continue as it is now. And then there will be um, the retaining work, uh, the retaining wall work area in that area. Um, and then again, they are starting to kind of is starting to finish up that area um, in in small sections and once enough of it is finished and they're far enough forward then the contractors team will come in and start doing um, the pile work that's necessary for uh, the retaining wall and we'll have kind of more details on that as we get a little bit closer to when that's going to happen um, and then the rest of the operations here are um, the same as they were. Um, so what is happening in the closed part of the park? So this is kind of a, the construction work sequencing, which we've had up uh, before. Um, it's kind of broken out into the waterfront esplanade um, section and then the inland section. Um, so currently um, the soil stabilization process is now going to start. Um, probably next week or the week after there were um, initially, there was soil stabilization kind of test work being done, which is what we showed the photo of the other week. And now they are going to move forward with that. So you will see the, um, 
the stone material that that'll be coming in on the barges in the next couple of weeks, um, bringing that uh, stone that they use for the stone columns, which we had um, a rendering on, I could bring it up at the next CAG meeting again, um, to do those that soil stabilization columns um, along the waterfront. So you'll see that work happening again. Um, they're making great progress with the esplanade removal. I have a photo um, on the next slide. Um, and then once again, that area is stabilized, um, then they'll start doing uh, the, the pile, the pile, the sheep piles. So similar to the work at PA2, when they had the different types of piles, we had the H piles, the sheep piles, and the mini piles. There will be um, a combination of piles that is happening along the Esplanade. And that's the combi wall that's here at C. Combi means a combination wall, which is a combination of piles um, to build the to build the wall. Um, they're also going to start doing the um, the kind of deep. Uh, someone is has. If everybody could mute, that would be great. Yeah, Christine, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Um, so they this <clears throat> the sewer replacement and upgrade work that will get. Um, we'll, we'll be starting in the near future as well. Um, again, there were um, permits, et cetera, that needed to be secured before that work could happen. So you will see much more movement now in the closed area of the park um, as we start these two um, work tasks. And so these are two photos um, that we did not see at CB3. Uh, this is the esplanade removal to the left. Um, and you could see the use of the crane. Well, you can't see the crane in this picture, but the crane is what's lifting up those sections of concrete um, for the esplanade. And then on the right here, we see the Corlier's hook um, temporary bridge ramp structure, which I'm sure many of you could see. You could see it from the FDR, but we did want to include it here uh, for those who might might not have. Um, so then moving on to the Houston Street pedestrian access. So there were um, a couple of questions at the CB3 meeting about, um, about this area and the design. So I just I pulled up um, this larger site plan and most of these renderings are from the PDC final presentation. So I included the link here. Um, PDC presentations, uh, both of them are linked on the website, really have a lot of information. Um, I, I've looked at them a million times and every time I look at them, I find, I see new information. Um, so it is really good every once in a while to just go back through and, and take a look at them. Um, but so this is the East House and Street entrance here. And you'll see that um, at the entrance, there are kind of two, um, major landscaped areas and there's kind of a, a little island in the middle um, and then it enters into this like a passive lawn area. So the use in this area is more passive than active. Active recreation is, is the fields and the track, etc. Um, so this is like kind of a passive lawn area. Um, and then this is the rendering, I made it a little bit larger, um, of that East Houston Street entry. And this retaining wall here and in the middle is the existing retaining wall. And that is part of the FDR structure. So that retaining wall is, is remaining and it's the existing retaining wall. So that wall is not going to be a new retaining wall. The wall um, here, <clears throat> and then there'll be a retaining wall adjacent to the existing retaining wall here that is um, in this picture below grade. So when they take down the ramps, right? If you're standing in the park and they're taking down the ramps, there would be the retaining wall that's existing for the FDR, right? Because you have to go down the ramps and then there's a wall. So as part of this contract, a new retaining wall needs to be built along the FDR to support the fill that's happening here. So in this area, in most other areas of the park, and if you flip through the PDC presentation, you'll see the shared use path goes under the overpasses. This is the only area in the park where the shared use path actually comes up to meet the grade of the entrance here. And this line back here, and you'll see it in the next slide, 
um, the next two slides also. This is the shared use path and it kind of joins the entrance here and then continues here. Um, but this is the first, uh, this is the only location where again, the shared use path comes up to grade. Um, in most other locations, uh, it goes under the overpasses. So part, one of the big goals for the ESCA project was this universal access, um, again, creating kind of on-grade crossings, which is what all of the new crossings do. They don't have the, the ramp structures that the existing crossings have, um, improved waterfront access. Um, and by removing the chain link fence, um, it removes, you know, kind of a barrier, but the retaining walls are what channel the park users into signalized crosswalks. And I'll show you a little bit more on the safety in the next slide. Um, also, by having this area on grade, it does improve the sight lines with pedestrians approaching the intersection from the park um, because there is a clearer view of what's going on um, in that whole area, whereas the ramps kind of are hidden below the walls. Um, so here's another view of that um, where you could see what it looks like from the park. This is the passive lawn area um, and then the retaining walls here again only have the openings where the signalized intersections are. Um, in the again another image from the PDC presentation. Um, so from the <clears throat> preliminary presentation to the final there were um, improvements. So there are bollards here. Um, and again, this is, it works two ways. It's to prevent vehicles from entering the park because the vehicles are on grade here, but it also acts as a, you know, um, as kind of a signal that there is something, you know, for pedestrians to slow down kind of as they're approaching this intersection here. So again, this is the existing wall here. And then <clears throat> there are stone barriers here and here. Those are the pink items. And then the uh, bollards that are here. Um, and then this kind of shaded area here is the shared use path. I think someone had asked um, how the shared use path would work in this area. And the shared use path kind of cuts in and works with the um, existing park circulation here. Um, so that is the Houston Street information. And we just have a few more slides um, and then we'll take more questions. So from the CAG site visit um, in May, uh, we do have some updates there. Um, so the improved condition of existing paths, um, it appears that the south, um, the south path was repaved. This is a, a photo of the south path here. Um, and then the contractor will be moving on to the north path um, in the next week or so. So that will be completed as well. Um, two track entrances were added, which we'll see on the access plan, which is the next slide. Uh, the wayfinding signage, um, there's a small photo of it here. Um, so we have started putting up the wayfinding signage. Um, more will be installed um, again next week. Uh, the updated access maps will be uh, posted as well. Um, there are some, and we thank everybody who gave us um, comments on, uh, on the access plan. Uh, you know, I think there was a comment to add um, the uh, trash receptacles and um, water fountains. Um, I think we could look into adding the water fountains, but I don't think the trash receptacles were not getting that um, detailed on the on the access plan. Um, so, but we could take a look at um, including water fountains. Um, so the water fountains are fully operational now and I think Parks is still working on the spray mister um, at the track area. And then um, once again, we, when we move to the Delancey Street area, um, we will look at the, the signage there. Um, we'll start looking at that now actually. Um, and then the for the upcoming PA2 Greenway closures, we'll have signage again in, in the park as well. Um, so this is the new updated access plan. Um, it is being posted to the website um, today or tomorrow it will be up, um, but it is on site as well. And we were just waiting um, for confirmation on the Houston Street area before we put up 
um, more of them. So now that now that we have confirmation on that, we will um, post more access plans on site. Um, for AQM <clears throat> for May, uh, the PM daily value did not surpass the PEL for the month of May. Um, there were four um, occasions where uh, the levels of particulate matter surpassed um, the PEL for an average of kind of 15 minutes. Um, and we have them listed here. And again, each was under 20 minutes. Um, on, uh, on May 22nd, there was an outlier reading. Um, an outlier reading is a reading and it in, we've had it in the, in the quarterly report um, it is a reading that is uncharacteristically, you know, high or low um, compared to the, the readings during that time. Um, so on 522, uh, um, an extremely high um, reading was recorded for two minutes. It was only two minutes. Um, and it was at uh, 9 p.m. on that Sunday. Um, so that, you know, again, is something that happens. We did reach out to the contractor. They reached out, you know, well, when it happened, you know, everybody was alerted, but again, it was for, for two minutes and then everything went back to normal. Um, but again, the follow-up, they followed up with the environmental consultant. The environmental consultant actually called the um, manufacturer of the air monitoring equipment. And they said um, that it could have been like a rain droplet hit, you know, ended up on the sensor and then it, until it evaporated, it caused a, a blip. And they said that these things happen. Um, again, it was for only two minutes and it was, you know, out off the, off the charts. Um, so that, that is called, that is what they call an anomaly um, in the reading. So you will see that in the quarterly report. Um, again, we're being fully transparent, um, you know, and letting you know, um, that you know that that did happen um, again, and the other um, the other readings were uh, for under twenty minutes, and um, mitigation techniques were were continuously implemented. Um, again, these are the monitoring locations for May, and then in the next uh, week or two, they will be installing more uh, more monitoring devices. Um, as we mentioned at the CB3 meeting. So I think next month you'll have, um, you'll have, we'll have a new map to show you. And then for, um, for project area two, there were um, several occasions where the, uh, where the particulate matter was again surpassed. Um, most of them were for, um, again, under 20 minutes. Many of them were outside of the construction hours um, and the 24 hour TWA was not surpassed at all. Um, again, each, each, um, each occurrence was monitored and, and, and mitigation techniques were continuously implemented um, during the construction hours. And I think that's, that is the last slide. Usually we have the community and the, and the work with us at the end, but we did that in the beginning because it was um, such a, a good thing to report. Um, so that is, that's the end of the presentation and I'm happy to take um, questions. There, I see quite a few hands. So I, Paula, I don't know who was first. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I more or less have kept track. So Michael. Yeah. yeah, so um, thanks, Desiree. Um, yeah, I've been keeping close tabs on the temporary bridge and the closure of the flagpole area because it's one of the biggest things that we keep getting asked about and, and we sort of have keep telling them, oh, next week, oh, next week. So, uh, so it's nice to see some new dates. But uh, my question specifically is that I, when I was in the park this morning, I saw that they finally put in sort of the landing of where the where the pedestrians are going to be coming out when they hit Corlears in the playground area. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just wondering, because that area is and an sort of has always been kind of a desolate sort of hidden area. Like if you talk to most of the residents of, of this area, they don't even know our park has a playground. That's how <laughs> hidden it is in the park. Um, so is there any plan for lighting or anything to add some level of security to that area as, as people are coming off the ferries at night? 
Yeah, Michael, that's a great question. I can, I can, I'll bring that back. I know that they added lighting along the bridge structure in the most recent, the, the most, most recently that I have seen, there's light fixtures on the structure. Um, I'm not sure about, I would imagine, unless the, the FDR lighting covers the ramp, that there would have to be something there as well. But I'll have to follow up with you on where exactly we have lighting um, there. And then I'll specifically mention, you know, within kind of that playground area to take a look at that. Um, but okay. I know that the, the eight foot fence is up on the this kind of superstructure, the center structure, um, as well as the lighting there. Um, but I, I'll ch double check on the ramp and then like the access from, you know, from like the building to the through the playground area. Um, so the eight, so the, the eight foot fence, that's the fence on the bridge to prevent people from throwing things over the bridge. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah I haven't, I, I, I probably, cause I'm looking through a chain link fence. I can't see that that's there. So it's nice to know that it's there. <laughs> yeah. I think, let me see if it's in that photo or did I just put the ramp up? Uh, where is it? Uh, let me see. Oh yeah. You could kind, kind of see the corner of it right here. That's the fence. And then, oh, there are, the, oh, here. So there are light, there is lighting on the ramps as well. It looks like they have some up here and I'm imagining there'll be more. Um, yeah, so I, I, think, I think that picture is the side that hits East River right. Park. Yes, I'm talking about the side that hits Corlears. Right, yeah. So I just wasn't, I was just saying for myself that yeah. is there lighting on the ramp or not? So there is, and we'll have to, we'll check the other side. Okay, thanks Desiree, appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Damaris, you had your hand raised, but it's it's down now. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna pass for now. Okay, um, Wendy. Yeah, thank you. Um, on slide eighteen, the shared youth use path. You know, the old path was pretty much the bicyclers and runners could keep going rather quickly through there, and it appears that the shared use path and this, and I think it maybe it's another slide a uh, couple a couple past here anyhow it's not so clear how bicyclers runners are going to be separated from park users entering and leaving is there any separation or no so it looks like um here as you can see there is kind of a delineated two lane um shared use path and that continues for again both sides of the through the park and i think as i mentioned earlier this is the only area where everybody kind of comes together on grade um the other areas of the park the shared use path goes under the overpasses so it is very separated um here i'd have to check with the pavement marking drawings, but I would imagine um, there would be separate pavement markings and you could kind of see that it's kind of alluded to here um, that show that there will be the shared use path crossing um, this area here. Um, but Wendy, specifically, I'd have to just come back with more of what that kind of what those pavement markings look like. I mean, because it's to me, that's a safety issue. Um, will vehicles be driving on that shared use path? I, it'll operate as the shared use path is operated now with parks, parks department vehicles, at, you know, as they need to uh, navigate around site. So only parks vehicles will be in the park. Is that correct? I, I mean, I think other vehicles as needed have to be in the park but because it will part of the reason i'm asking is that there's a very large new parking lot next to the tennis courts mm -hmm. how will drivers access that parking lot and will they be driving through the park to come and go from the tennis courts there's a parking lot in in the east river park right just south of where you're pointing to there's a new parking lot um, and it, uh, it's adjacent to the eco play area or whatever. It's, it's directly across from the um, fireboat house on the, on the FDR side. If you go a little bit south of there, you'll see it. The maintenance and operation building. No, I'm talking about a parking lot. There's three parking lots in the future park, correct? 
three parking areas, one on the Greenway by oh. Pier 42, one further south, and then one right here, just south of the tennis courts. Right, so those are for parks maintenance and operations. So, so where do they, there so, aren't, there isn't parking for pedestrian, like for um, pedestrians for the community. There isn't community parking in the park. And there's no parking for users of the tennis courts, is that correct? I don't believe so. I, I mean, I'll, oh. I, I'll bring it back and double check, but uh, as because it's I, a pretty big parking lot that's going in right there. And right now there's not that many vehicles in the park, parks vehicles, obviously during construction, but in the past there have not been many. So I'm wondering why three parking lots, especially having one right on the shared use path where it's quite narrow by Pier 42. Okay, yeah, I could, we can, I could definitely come back and, and again, before the next CAG meeting, I, I, I can get a response on that. That, that should be uh, fairly easy. Okay, um, and on page 24, um, you, show, you, start, you show the monitors as they, were, as they have been. Where will, when they're coming in now, are you including more on the community side because there's more work going on on the community side with the parallel conveyance, et cetera? Do you know, and the bridge work, Will, will there be additional uh, monitors on the community side? So parallel conveyance is a completely separate project. So right now we report on project area one and project area two monitors. Once parallel conveyance comes on board, anything that's associated with parallel conveyance will be uh, reported on as part of parallel conveyance. Um, for project area one, I do not personally know where the new uh, monitors are going to go, but they will be, as you mentioned, associated with the construction work. So um, we could certainly, you know, again, once the we have the new monitoring locations, um, we could certainly share that. So just to just to finish that, at Montgomery Street, there is a, a gate going up, right, on the um, west side of the FDR. Right. And when does that work take place? That work, there's still not a hard start date on that. Um, there is still coordination with Gouverneur Gardens um, and the project team on when that work will begin. Um, it will, it is scheduled for this year. Um, however, you know, items need to be worked out before that work could actually start. So We've alluded that that work will start in the previous um, presentations. We did mention that. Um, again, we are going to do the tabling there in anticipation of the work starting, um, but there has not been an exact date set on when the work there will begin. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Diane? Hi, Desiree. Thanks for the explanations about Houston. Um, can we go back to those slides any one in particular? Or? Uh, the one, the one before this, I think. This um, one? No, I guess the one before that. This one. Okay. Well, either one of those. So, um, I, right now, when you use the ramps, you're looking directly down into the work that Conet is doing on the the power lines. So it looks to me like in this new, you know, when the, when this area is finished, the Con Ed lines are actually going to be buried underneath those access paths. Is that right? Yes. This is the only location where the Con Ed lines will have a significant amount of fill on them. Okay. And then what happens if, God forbid, they need work? Then this area, they would need to, you know, Dig it up. Dig it up, yeah, to, to yeah. do the work in this area. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to hear that because I thought that one of the main considerations that led to this new plan was not burying the con ed lines because that would make it too difficult to maintain them or, you know, deal with an emergency. Um, how, how big is the area? How long is the area where they're going to be buried? Um, I would have to get mm -hmm. back to you on that because I okay. don't specifically, but I could, I mean, it looks like the grade starts dropping here mm -hmm. um, because of the size of the wall that's being mm -hmm. built here. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that it really is a kind of isolated mm -hmm. area to this intersection here to make that an on-grade approach. And I, mm -hmm. again, I would imagine many conversations had happened to 
um, again, agree to, you know, th that being um, an, a raised kind of level of the park. Um, every other locate every, at every other crossing, the shared use path is, or the greenway is, um, you know, below all of the crossings and the crossings span over um, the greenway, again, to, to not build up that soil on top of the Con Ed lines. So right. this is the, it seems like this is the only area where there is that significant amount of fill. Okay, yeah, if you could go back and check on that and just make sure that that's the case and then sort of find out how much space there is there. Um, that would be good to know um, mm -hmm. because that was, we were given that as a major reason why, you know, the, the earlier plan was not really feasible because the, burying all the Con Ed lines would be a bad thing. So yeah, I'd like to know more about that. Yeah, no, when I was looking into this more again, and, you know, I wasn't here during the whole years of design. <laughs> so when I was also looking into this more um, from the CB3 meeting, I was also, I was like, oh, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> so I, I hear you on that. Um, and I did like a, you know, rendering through to see the whole length of the, um, of the shared use path. So, I, but I'll take a deeper look at the extents of that, you know, um, grading over the, over the lines. Great. Thank you. Wendy. Um, thanks. You know, at the CB3 meeting, Diane asked about the and maybe this got covered during the first half of this meeting. I'm sorry, it's late. But she asked about the very north end of PA1 that's now getting closed, the big detour for, um, you know, to go around to reconnect. Is, and she asked about the timing. Did you get any more information on the timing on when that area will be available for use again by people? So I... I that's that was a parks question and Paula I don't know if you had heard back from parks on that the Con Ed area to the north that's what you're talking about Wendy right yep okay um yeah I'm I'm not remembering if there's so many balls in the air right now I'm not sure if we reached out to them about that but I'm making a note of it and I will look back thank you Okay. Yeah, I know Melissa was on the CB3 meeting and she had at that meeting, she had mentioned that she thought it was going to finish before the end of the year, um, but that they, she was going to look into um, a more concrete date. Um, so I think it's just a matter of kind of reaching out for them. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, if not, um, we can conclude this portion of the meeting. Thank you, Desiree and team. Um, oh, can I just say one more thing? Sorry. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to say if, if there are questions, you, know, you could always submit them through the inquiry tool. I know Paula directs a bunch our way too, but you, know, you have both options. So I just wanted to put that, put that through. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Desiree. Okay, CAG members, we'll take a, a one and a half minute uh, bio break and reconvene.
Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Um, again, thanks for being here tonight. We don't have a, a set agenda for this part, so I'm going to kind of open it up. But before I do that, um, I do want to bring up the notion of um, the fact that attendance has been pretty poor um, both last month and today. Um, I have some theories about that, um, but I just wanted to kind of open that question up and see if, if anyone has any thoughts or has talked to fellow CAD members who haven't been joining. Um, yeah, curious to hear what your thoughts are on, on low attendance. Nice weather. Yeah, summer might be part of it. The fact that it's no longer dark, not even when these meetings end. Okay, well, feel free to, if you want to share something with me about that via email, um, feel free to reach out to me. Tara and I are going to be doing some outreach to the, to some people who haven't been attending um, <laughs> uh, after this meeting. Um, I'm laughing at, at Trevor's uh, comment in the chat. So we, um, Sorry, before we start, I just want can we do a quick roll call. Actually, um, actually, I just I just wanted to um, I I mean I have I'm just gonna name list off names. I just need clarity on which Christine is on. Um, but I'm just gonna roll off everyone's name real quick, quick, just to make sure that I have it. I know Michael. Um, I think he just um jumped off. So, um, but otherwise, Sam Moskowitz, Seth Corin, um, Trevor Holland, Sandy McKee, Diane Lake, Dub Goldman, um. Natasha Cohn, Robin Chattel, Tamaris Reyes, Wendy Brar, and yes, I'm just not sure if it's Christine Brooken or Christine Dats Romero who's on the call. If you can unmute yourself and let us know or put in the chat. Actually, maybe that the, Christine may have left the call too. No, yeah, iPhone Christine. All right. Um, I, I have a feeling it's Dots Romero, but I'm not 100%. Okay, great. We'll, we'll try to figure that out. Thank you. I think it just got confirmed for me. Thank you. Um, so I just put in the chat um, <clears throat> a link to the document that we've been kind of building, and I've, I've cleaned it up, and it's the document of, of topics and of uh, concerns, areas of concerns by topic that, that were largely identified through this survey of priorities that we had you guys fill out a couple months ago. But I've cleaned up the document. Um, at the top, you can see it, um, all the, the, the nine topics. And it's just, a, this document is really kind of meant to be a way of tracking all the, the questions and conversations that come up um, about these topics. Um, it does not replace the question log. I'm also trying to catch up on entering uh, questions and the answers that we receive into that log. Um, but yeah, wanna open it up. What do you guys wanna talk about? Sandy. Um, <laughs> I just, I mean, I think for, um, for CB6, it's, it's always scheduled because things keep evolving and, and moving around. And this, you know, especially Stives at Cove Park. Um, now, I'm still, I'm not quite 100% sure of what the schedule is because it's sort of shifted today. But um, that, that's fine. I know things happen. And I think the other thing is, um, for CB6, our big concern is that it's the greenway and having um, bicycle access and just making sure that's kept in place because that's, it's really, I think, um, our portion of the, of the work is the one that's the, the, the bicycle route is the most affected currently. So those are the two things for, I think for us that really have a high impact. Okay. Yeah, and we need to reach out to. It's on our list of things to do to reach out to DOT about the confusing signage related to the Avenue C 
Yeah. And we reach out to the DOT and they said, oh, later, we'll talk. We haven't figured it out yet. But they said that for six months, you know. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Um, I thought, yeah, Robin. Yeah, hi. Um, so I know that, you know, because we've been in a park, in the park that we would go that this uh, presentations have been get, being brought to the parks department and we're all connected there but now that this parallel conveyance work is going to begin do you know if they're presenting this stuff to other committees um on the parks and i guess i i'm a cb3 member i need to start looking at other committees but if it's a land use issue we should be in, in at those meetings because um it's concerning that the work that they're going to, that they want to begin in, in the, in, you know, three, four months from now without really having presented this to anyone or community to get community feedback. And, and especially with the ask for the so-called the property owners to pay for the work that the city's doing. So I'm going okay, so, to all know anything. So the question that. is uh, to, to what, to what other entities is parallel conveyance information being spread right in other words they've been to, to the parks they right they've come to parks meetings for the community boards are they going to land use committee meetings is it you know or, or whoever else would be in charge of the streets mm -hmm. in community boards because i think these issues need to be brought to the attention of the community board okay uh wendy um, yes, um, and I had sent this earlier, but can we get Con Ed to come to a meeting and talk directly about what their plans are? It just seems like um, it's very hard to predict what's going to be open and closed, even for DDC, without Con Ed in the room. Um, yes, I saw your email about that. Um, and I will, I'll ask DDC. We'll, we'll, we'll and also, as, as my email mentioned, the restitution um, fund. Can we get somebody to talk with us? You know, if it's the thousand trees for thirty-two million dollars, that's thirty thousand dollars a tree. So that's ten times what they cost. They cost about three grand each. So let's see if we can find out and get that remaining thirty million put to things that this community actually needs. Okay, noted. Um, wait, there's something in the chat. Oh, never mind. Um, Diane. Sorry, I'm trouble getting off of mute there. I put uh, a comment in that document, but I'll, I'll raise it here as well, which is, I believe we're in hurricane season now. Um, and we have not heard any presentations from DDC about what their storm safety plans are in the construction areas. Um, we have two giant cranes in the south end of the park. We have exposed con ed lines. Um, only a little, you know, on a little bit of the finished work has been filled in. So there's a big exposed section in, you know, like sort of between Houston and Sixth. You know, there's all that equipment, there's all that excavated dirt. And, you know, we raised this question multiple times during the, you know, planning stages and during the ULERP. And they said, oh, no, we'll have an emergency plan. Um, but I think now the hurricane season is here. It's time to talk about what that emergency plan is and what, you know, how all of that equipment and, you know, open um, excavations and so on will be secured in the case of a storm. Thank you, Diane. Any other thoughts or questions? I know we have a lot on our to-do list and there are a lot of you know, next steps embedded into this document that we will act on, but um, anything else? Well, I guess 
Um, I sense that um, there's nothing else and or people are eager to move on with their evening. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then also, I mean, we'll, please all review the document. Um, there, yeah, we, I know that there's just there's some actually really good dialogue. Thank you, um, Diane and Wendy for for contributing to some of the items. Um, as far as like some things moving forward, I did. I, I don't think I had a chance to include it yet, um, because I just got um, the notification from Parks today. But we did inquire about the. Um, about the um, charcoal briquettes that are in Corlier stuff that are being put in the flower beds and such. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, they did not give us quite the response we had hoped. Um, they basically, of course, indicated that, you know, it's not um, permitted in that area. Um, so they will um, continue with the signage, but they will not be providing any kind of um, receptacle to allow for proper disposal. Um, I also believe that. Yeah, and then they'll just keep an eye out for the debris to make sure that you know they'll if if people do dispose of their charcoal briquettes in the in the flower beds and tree pits, at least that they'll be able to catch it sooner than later. But um, you know, I think they're also probably going to um, let the the park officers know that folks are doing this and just um, being a little bit more alert and alerting folks that they're not um, permitted to barbecue if they are um, found to doing so in the area. Um, Wendy. Yeah, um, 4th of July is coming. And I just looked at the city's website about the closure of the FDR. And the closest opening is all the way up at, I mean, the most southerly on, you know, place where people can get on is at 20th Street. Any way we can get it opened up in this community? Because I think people will definitely be wanting to have some space for that holiday. It's been a big, a big part of the park's life for people. Uh, Wendy, do me a favor, please, and, and put that in a short email and send that to me. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, well then, I mean, Tara, do you have anything to, to add or should we adjourn? Um, I One more to add. Um, we sent another email request to you all. If you have not yet reviewed and voted on the bylaws, please, that would be great for us to, to actually like move forward and, and really start implementing what's being proposed. Um, again, the, um, I hope you all find the, the, the priority document useful. Um, we want this to be like a living document where you all, um, in, you know, offer any kinds of comments. Obviously you can continue to email us with questions moving forward as well. Um, but we really just want to make sure that this is kind of like a guiding document that also um, we can, we will be sharing, we share with DDC just so they know what um, is coming up most recently as it relates to like um, gag items. And as Paul was mentioned, we still will have the question log, um, but this is really more, um, it's just something a little bit easier for us to all follow as it relates to um, the priorities of the CAG. So yeah, I'm not in the interest of keeping anyone, especially since it was supposed to rain and it hasn't yet. Um, so, um, and again, any um, questions, concerns related to attendance, um, I don't, you know, it has been several months. It may be time for us to revisit um, maybe some alternate times that might um, assist with all of this. So um, we're open to any, you know, our inboxes are open and yeah, I fine with the journey if you all are. Okay, well, you're all being very silent. So um, have a good evening. And thank you. Thank you all. Have a good one.